Let us now introduce our speaker, Dr. Subhash Rao, sir, General Medicine. A small lady to introduce, sir. Dr. Subhash U. Rao, MD, DNB, MRCP UK, FRCA, Education Examinations and Memberships, Primary FRCA May 2003, MRCP NOV 1999, Diplomate in National Board AUG 1999, MD AUG 1998, MBBS MAR 1994, Physicians Help, One Visiting Consultant Physician and Intensivist, Venikati Swara Hospital in Apollo Spectra, Chennai, India, DEC 2017 to date, 2 Gen and ICU Physician, Medical Director, National Hospital Chennai, India, DEC 2003 to Feb 2011, 3 Locum Clinical Fellow PICU, Newcastle General Hospital Newcastle upon Tyne, Aug 2003 to Sept 2003, 4 Show Anesthesia, UK, 1999 to 2003, 5 Clinical Attachment in Cardiology, Care of Elderly, Doncaster Royal Infirmary Doncaster, Jan 1999 to Dec 1999, 6 Consultant Physician, National Hospital, Chennai, Sept 1998 to Oct 1998, 7th G Trainee in General Medicine, Kesterba Hospital, Manipal, July 1995 to Aug 1998, HO in General Medicine, Government General Hospital, Chennai, India, May 1994 to Oct 1994, Nine House Officer SRMC in Rai Chennai Feb 1993 to Feb 1994, Skill, Expert in, Central Line, Dialysis Catheter, Arterial Line, Emergency Endotracheal Intubation, Bone Marrow Aspiration plus Divided by Biopsy, Lumbar Puncture, Pleural Aspirations, Intercostal Drain Insertion, Sangstaken Blakemore Tube, Temporary Pacing Line, Permacath insertion for dialysis. Lot of papers presented. Conferences and CME programs attended in UK and India. Audit and research activities done national and international level. Extracurricular activities. Physical fitness I believe that doctors have a duty of good living by exercising regularly. Staying thin. Keeping temperate habits and by promoting these principles to patients. My other interests include rowing on the Adyar River. Road cycling. Tennis and numismatics. Doctor. Good, uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank Taimi and Rao for giving me a chance to speak today. So um, I'm uh, I'm a general physician these days, and uh, what you saw was was what, what happened in the past. So um, and uh, I think I will start off uh, giving my uh, views on uh, how how I, I mean, talk about how I evaluate this thing, and leave it to uh, the, my specialist colleagues to to take things further and uh, explain things in greater detail. So. Um, I, I have a clinic in uh, Adia and uh, I, I, I see a lot of patients who come to me with chest pain. But some people think I'm a cardiologist, which I'm not. So, uh, so I, I see a lot of chest pain. So let me just go through uh, the, some of the common types of chest pains that I get. I mean, a lot of people come with chest pain which mimics what comes from the heart. It's either because of coronary artery disease, because of pulmonary vascular disease, because of valve issues like uh, mitral valve prolapse, um, aortic stenosis. Uh, I don't see much of pericarditis, and I've seen a few patients of dissection. Uh, pneumonia is quite common, uh, especially in winters, and I see quite a few people who have uh, pleural uh, effusions and uh, some with pneumothorax. Uh, plenty of patients with GERD. I'm seeing an, an, an uh, epidemic of GERD after COVID. I, I, I find a lot of my patients who continue to have dry cough have GERD. Um, it's of the perforation, not very commonly, and, and, and a lot of people who have gas issues. Uh, so, so I would like to talk about uh, chest pain uh, very, very uh, in, in very general terms, uh, very generically. Uh, talk briefly about what are the risk factors for certain chest pains, um, how to take a history, how I take a history, um, and what's the minimum uh, clinical examination and what investigations might need to be done from, from a general gen physician's point of view. So, um, cardiac chest pain. Um, very many people come with chest pain, on the, I mean, have, have a cardiac chest pain and it's usually central. 
uh, resource channel. It radiates like 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 we all know it does to the left shoulder, left arm, left ear, jaw, etc. And what I think is most important is when people have sweating. I, I really give that a lot of importance. Uh, people also have palpitations, uh, nausea, vomiting, etc. And uh, in my OP, what I always stress is you get this pain when you are walking, climbing upstairs, or you get it when you are sitting down. And I give give uh, the history of pain coming when 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 they are sitting down a little less importance when it comes to the heart. Uh, and these people generally tend to have uh, a cardiac risk factors. Either they are obese, they are smokers, they have dyslipidemia, uh, diabetes. Most of quite a few of our patients are diabetic. Um, and, and a lot of stress, especially with COVID, the stress level seems to have gone up for everybody. So people are sleeping poorly, um, uh, so some of them with sleep apnea. Uh, so th this is a typical patient who comes with chest pain. So um, um, so as a, as a physician, all of us would, would have an ECG machine, so everyone gets an ECG and then look out for abnormalities, check for lipids, check the sugar levels. Uh, X-rays when required, echocardiograms and a TMT. Um, I, I don't get, I get very few uh, emergencies in my clinic, so this is all I do. And then if it proves they've got cardiac pain, put them on the appropriate medicines like antiplatelets, nitrates. Um, I like flavidon, beta blockers, statins, etc. Um, another common, especially this time, uh, uh, common uh, presentation with chest pain is people who have a pleuritic pain. Um, this, in uh, contrast to uh, the cardiac pain, is, is pretty sharp, usually one-sided, uh, and most importantly, increases on deep breathing, coughing, sneezing, etc. And people usually have other respiratory symptoms like uh, fever, uh, phlegm, uh, expectoration, uh, breathing trouble, wheezing, uh, sore throat, etc. Um, so when this, uh, when when I get a history of all of this. Um, I think an X-ray, blood test, um, uh, these days I think uh, uh, doing even a COVID test is, is a good good idea for everyone who comes with uh, uh, respiratory complaints like this. Uh, acid reflux, like I said, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people with acid reflux, a lot of people with sore throat, uh, dry, dry cough, uh, uh, not always with retrosternal burning, but with, uh, when they do, they have this quite a bit of uh, discomfort in the chest. Uh, they have bile reflux. Quite a few people have a dry throat on waking up, which, is, which improves quite uh, quickly on standing up, um, up when they wake up in the mornings. Another, another thing that I see, uh, I think is quite important uh, indicator of acid reflux is that people go on clearing their throats like <coughs> all the time. I think rather than being because of uh, uh, sinusitis and, and a post nasal drip, I think it's because of uh, acid reflux. Uh, and when you look at the throat, quite often uh, you see people with lots of follicles, uh, you know, uh, in the back of the, the posterior pharyngeal wall, the pharyngeal pillars are quite congested and there is no uh, purulence, there's no uh, pus points over the tonsils to suggest a, a bacterial infection. Um, most of, quite a few of them are on the heavier side. Quite a few of them have uh, have lifestyle issues. They're working late nights. They have heavy. Uh, they, they sleep late. They have heavy dinners. Drink a lot of water before they sleep, and uh, and therefore have uh, issues with the reflux. Um, and uh, so for these people, uh, I I I don't do too many tests uh, other than especially if they have a history of weight loss or this uh, this phase or difficulty in swallowing in which case i would do a stool local blood and then push for an endoscopy because most of them would respond quite well to h2 receptor blockers and uh, ppis gas can can also be very distressing for for patients and quite quite a few of them don't realize uh, that that um, the sharp pain that they get which moves around in the chest goes to the back uh, sometimes being relieved by belching is due to gas um, and um, quite a few people uh, come to a general practitioner with this kind of a chest pain with very sharp mobile kind of a chest pain and um, uh, I, I, I treat them with antacids and uh, medicines that will absorb gas like MPS, mucopolysidoxane 
there's a very good medicine called gasofen, which works pretty quickly in, in easing uh, the pain from, um, from uh, I, I think, intestinal distension by bubble gas. Um, quite a few of them are constipated and, and relieving constipation with, uh, with, with a laxative would help. And um, um, taking uh, uh, prokinetics, uh, pro antacids, probiotics would also help, help them quite a bit. Um, musculoskeletal chest pain. Again, um, uh, people people uh, can get very severe, very localized, sharp pain, uh, which which uh, which happens when they turn, move, bend. And uh, if you were to compress that chest and, and elicit pain, that would tell you that this is uh, uh, probably arising from the muscles and joints in the chest. Um, and this responds quite well to NSAIDs, ice pack, hot pack, and um, some people have this after trauma where uh, an X-ray might be help helpful to reassure them that there is no fracture. Microvial prolapse causes a variety of different pains, usually sharp quite, uh, uh, and associated with palpitations, breathlessness, um, and, and is more common in, in women. Um, quite a few of them have anxiety because of the chest pain or anxiety uh, as part of their nature. Uh, auscultation would reveal a, a mid systolic click and uh, uh, an echocardiogram would confirm that they have a mitral prolapse. And treatment with beta blockers and, and uh, um, antidepressants might help or anti anxiolytic medicines may help. Um, recently, I saw a patient like this. This is not his photograph, but someone who had severe pain in, in, in the chest. Um, it, it was actually three days after the pain started that the patient actually uh, uh, showed up with the rash. Um, and uh, exhaustion can, can be an unusual cause for severe pain, and especially when it's on the left side, all of us are a little worried. So, for this patient that I had recently, all tests were normal, obviously. And once we saw the rash, uh, we treated him with uh, antivirals, um, valcyclovir and uh, antineuralgic treatment after which he, he, he responded quite well. So, uh, next few slides. Uh, I mean, so, uh, in my practice, uh, I think when you sit uh, outside a hospital with limited facilities, uh, it's quite important that we take a good history uh, uh, taking uh, into consideration the patient's uh, uh, background, medical history, and uh, do the basic tests to, to identify the cause and treat uh, the, the chest pain and, and give them relief. So, um, uh, to summarize, whenever I get someone with a chest pain who says sweat with sweating, I'm always alerted and I do a complete and thorough checkup, including sending them to the hospital and sometimes even admitting them if the ECG shows any changes. But uh, pleurotic pain and uh, uh, pain from the uh, from the chest wall um, can be quite quite well treated uh, as an outpatient. Uh, so for the over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some uh, pictures. Uh, some of them have already the, the answers are already there, and then we will talk about uh, these uh, tests um, and 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 uh, for some of them I have a history like this. Uh, so this is the x-ray of a 53 year old man who had uh, severe retrosternal uh, burning pain um, for very many years and he gave a history of regurgitation and easy vomiting. Anytime he eats a little bit more it would come out and uh, recently he started uh, noticing that he's having difficulty in swallowing him and he had lost weight. So um, this is the x-ray that, that, that was taken for him. and. Um, can anyone tell, tell me what it could be? Anyone wants to take a guess? The, the red arrows are pointing towards another shadow behind the heart. Now, this gentleman uh, had, had, had a hiatus hernia and he had severe acid reflux. So uh, it is said that in people who have acid, uh, acid reflux for a while, 25% uh, have a hiatus hernia and people with erosive esophagitis up to 75% have a hiatus hernia. When, when people, when, when you diagnose Barrett's esophagus, nearly 90% have, uh, it is because of uh, hiatus hernia. 
So again, you look for alarm signs when, when you have someone with uh, hyperthermia. That is when they have anorexia, when they have uh, a fecal apple blood being positive, dysphagia, weight loss. These are the patients for whom you have to do an endoscopy. And the endoscopy shows could show a uh, stricturing of the uh, lower most of the gap, uh, apart from the uh, could show even a growth or stricturing at the lower most part of the uh, gastroesophageal junction. So tests that you can do apart from uh, the, the stool occult blood, uh, looking for uh, anemia, iron deficiency, you can do an esophageal pH monitoring, you can do a barium swallow, endoscopy, all of this will, will show to confirm the diagnosis. Um, the next x-ray is a 50 year old lady who had uh, uh, neck discomfort on swallowing and restlessness on lying down. Uh, any papers for this? So this patient has a superior medial sign widening with a, uh, a trachea that's pushed to one side. Uh, and this lady had a retrosternal goita. So uh, these people can have an atypical pain in the neck, which could mimic uh, a, a cardiac uh, thing. And it could be worse on lying down. It could be breathless on lying down, leading to confusion. So uh, a, 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 a clinical examination of someone with a retrosternal goita would, would uh, show that you have sternal dullness indicating that there is a mass behind the sternum. And if they were to raise the hands, uh, the, the jugular veins would, would fill up. It's called pen button sign. So, um, I think referring to a thyroid surgeon would be the next thing to do for her after the basic workup. Um, now this x-ray is again of someone who was a smoker for 40 years and has breathlessness and exertion. And it's, it's, I'm showing that only to show that uh, this gentleman might have emphysema, although the cardiac size is a little big. It's not the usual tubular heart that you'd see with emphysema. But uh, the, the uh, x-ray shows that uh, you can count nine ribs anteriorly. So if you can count nine ribs anteriorly and 11 ribs posteriorly, uh, it indicates hyperinflation of the lung. Usually people with emphysema would have a, a flattened diaphragm. Both domes of diaphragm would be flat, displaced downwards, and there would be a tubular heart. So this gentleman, suppose he were to develop breathlessness all of a sudden, uh, he might have a pneumothorax and this is something we must be alert to in people who, who are smokers and who have COPD and, and clinical examination in someone with pneumothorax might be, not, may be normal, you may not pick up anything in, in your outpatients or you could have uh, hypoxia, you could have reduced RMT on one side, uh, hyperresonant percussion node uh, or even a media sinus shift to the other side of this if he's going in for tension. Uh, tension pneumothorax. So an ECG x-ray uh, could be done and, and, and admission to hospital would be mandatory I think for someone with a pneumothorax. Uh, current recommendations are if patient is stable, not hypoxic, not breathless, to observe him and repeat serial x-rays four to six hours later. If there's no expansion, uh, give him oxygen and uh, hopefully that will flush out the nitrogen in the pneumothorax and the uh, lung could re-expand again. Uh, on the other hand, if a if, uh, patient is breathless, then you could put in a narrow bore uh, needle into the chest and aspirate with a three-way um, three um, three valve, aspirate of the air. Um, and again, uh, along with giving oxygen and, and pain relief for if he's got chest pain because of the pneumothorax. Um, this is uh, uh, an x-ray of a 57 year old, I actually had this patient, although the x-ray is not his, who traveled to Kanyakumari by car in summer. And uh, when he came back, he had a little bit of uh, swelling in the feet and, uh, and, and, and had chest pain. So we did an x-ray and, and I, this is not his x-ray, but this x-ray shows some findings, um, which um, any guesses what this might be? It shows a uh, uh, wedge, nearly wedge-shaped, plural-based uh, shadow on the right side, uh, which is which is called Hampton's hump of uh, uh, um, a pulmonary embolism, and the uh, CD, uh, the, the CT reconstruction on, on the on the right side uh, show, is supposed to indicate the, the uh, occlusion of the blood vessel there, with the consolidation. This gentleman also had a 
probably has a, a pulmonary infarction. So this gentleman, uh, long long distance travel in in in, in Chennai or Tamil Nadu summer rehydration, may probably some kinking of the uh, iliac veins um, you know, uh, led to a, a, a DVT and a pulmonary embolism. So he was put on uh, oral anticoagulants for three months, after which he remained well. All other tests, including those for thrombophilia and occult malignancy, was negative for this chap. Um, okay, now this is an interesting x-ray. Um, uh, the story is, this is a 65-year-old cardiac patient with all risk factors for coronary heart disease, who develops a new breathlessness in the ICU, and a bedside x-ray is taken. Uh, so this x-ray shows uh, cardiomegaly, a permanent pacemaker, but what the arrows indicate is what's called the deep sulcus sign. And this is quite a good, good thing to pick up in someone who's supine and has developed a small pneumothorax. So um, depending on the patient's condition, like, I, like we spoke about in the previous case, oxygen therapy uh, and uh, avoidance of straining, uh, should help him. If it does not, he might need a, a, an ICD uh, and an underwater drain of, of the pneumothorax. So this is a, a X-ray of an elderly smoker um, who had breathlessness on who had breathlessness. He always had breathlessness on walking. He developed a sudden worsening of uh, breathlessness with the right-sided chest pain. And uh, this uh, um, this X-ray is quite interesting in that it shows uh, a large large cavity here, and you see the, the pneumothorax on this side. You see the compensatory emphysema here with the diaphragm displaced down. Um, and uh, the, on the, the X-ray on the right side is is what uh, what was taken after the ICD was was put in and the pneumothorax re-expanded. And you can see over here, the uh, lung is re-expanded, but you have a huge Buddha on the, on, on the, on the right lower, lower side. So, um, so this is another, another uh, x-ray of a patient with pulmonary embolism. And you can see over here, there is unilateral hypo, uh, translucent, hypertranslucency over here. And, uh, 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 and this is again indicative of a uh, it's called a Westermark sign, an indicator of uh, uh, pulmonary embolism. Now, uh, the next x-ray is of an 80-year-old person who's been unwell for a while. He's got aches and pains everywhere and develops a left-sided chest pain and has chest fall tenderness. So, um, this these arrows indicate something and you can see that the rib is uh, is uh, is expanded, it's expand side and has lytic uh, lesions. This gentleman is supposed to have a, a myeloma with, with bony mets. So anyone, uh, malignancies of the ribs can also give you uh, left-sided chest pain. Um, it would be a, a skeletal pain which increases on local pressure and uh, it's important that not every 80-year-old uh, has a cardiac problem. It's important for us to keep our minds open as to what may be the cause for the pain. Uh, this X-ray again shows uh, superior mediastinal widening. Uh, these tumors of the mediastinum can also compress the, the structures in the, in the uh, thorax and give you chest pain. Um, this is a X-ray of someone with, with a possible thymoma. Now, the next ECG is a 50-year-old male who had exertional breath, uh, chest pain, breathlessness and palpitations in the recent history of syncope. So, uh, this ECG shows uh, sinusism, normal axis. It shows pretty significant uh, left ventricular hypertrophy with deep T-wave inversions. So, someone with a valve issue, possibly aortic stenosis, uh, who's got uh, exertional breathlessness, palpitations, and even syncope. So this would be a, a, a patient to be referred to the cardiologist uh, for, for better evaluation than what a generalist could do and in hospital. Um, 
This is an ECG of a 23 year old man who is fit and well and has fever for 5 days and then develops a sudden central stabbing chest pain. Uh, now this ECG shows ST elevation everywhere in, in nearly all the leads but you see the ST elevation has a curving upwards and this is typical of pericarditis and viral infections are quite a common cause for pericarditis. Um, so treat, treating him with NSAIDs, uh, colchicine uh, and even some steroids might help once you uh, identify what, what, uh, what is the virus uh, that's causing the problem and you do all the other tests, basic tests, uh, ESR, CRT which will be elevated, uh, echocardiogram to look out for peri pericardial effusions, cardiac enzymes probably to, to rule out uh, 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 myocardial injury. Now, um, the story for the next ECG is that it's, it's, it's taken on, on a 19 year old college girl who went out to eat with friends and then developed a sharp pain, worse on breathing, it's a pleuritic pain on return to the hostel. Uh, so she visited a near, nearby hospital and an ECG was taken and this is what it showed. So this ECG shows sinus rhythm, right axis deviation with a uh, with a S1, sorry, with a uh, S wave in lead, lead 1, a Q wave in lead 3 and a T wave inversion in lead 3, S1, Q3, T3 uh, pattern which is seen in about 20 or 30 percent of people with an acute pulmonary embolism. RV strain in the form of a right bundle branch block. So, um, this girl was probably on the contraceptive pill and developed um, uh, an acute pulmonary embolism, probably DVT. And she would need a full workup being young uh, for even, even thrombophilia and um, lupus anticoagulant. So, um, the next ECD is of a 44 year old man who is known to have a cardiac disease, who has exertional chest pain, breathlessness, and syncope, and has a short systolic murmur. Uh, the ECG taken shows uh, significant left ventricular hypertrophy with deep, narrow T wave inversions in, in nearly all the leads. This gentleman has a hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy confirmed by an echocardiogram. Um, again, refer to the cardiologist for, for treatment. So, uh, the next ECG is of a 60 year old lady who has who's been diabetic for 20 years but has been lost to follow up and she comes with uh, breathlessness but denies chest pain. So, uh, this ECG shows uh, T -wave, uh, t uh, tall T waves in most of the leads and uh, a diabetic of more than 10 years is highly likely especially if, if it's not controlled as she's got nephropathy, um, renal failure and hyperkalemia. So this ECG is suggestive of hypokalemia. Uh, a, 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 a person with renal failure could also have pericarditis. So she would need complete evaluations including echocardiogram, renal function test, uh, and the specialist cardiologist and nephrologist to have a look at her. Now, uh, the next ECG is a, a, of a 30 year old mother of two who, who lost her mother recently after a brief illness and she developed uh, severe central chest pain with sweating after a bout of crying. So this, this shows uh, good ST elevations in, in most of the leads. Uh, looks like a massive anterior wall in mine. But uh, this is supposed to be an ECG of someone with vasospastic angina, Prince Metal's angina. This responds very well to nitrates and calcium channel blockers. So you need a complete cardiac evaluation in any case. Now this ECG, this X-ray shows, um, um, can anyone find anything wrong with this X-ray? It's not very really clear. Increased bronchovascular vascular. Sorry? Increased bronchovascular yes. Some higher node. Higher node. May not be that prominent. The, uh, the the interesting thing is it's it's difficult to uh, to see is this this area 
That's a Vedic uh, uh, So uh, when I was doing MD, people always said when you when you have a normal looking uh, X-ray, always look out for a small pneumothorax, uh, bony problems, you know, soft tissue and subdiaphragmatic issues, and uh, uh, problems behind the heart. I mean. Um, Changes behind the heart on, on the X-ray, and this X-ray shows that compared to this rib, the uh, what's that? One, two, three, fourth rib on the on the left side seems uh, uh, like there's some osteolysis over there due to malignancy. This is another another such X-ray. So what what I'm saying is we are all seeing more and more older people in our practice, and when they come with chest pain, we'll have to go with an open mind. Um, and, and see, is this a muscular or skeletal pain? Is this cardiac pain? Is it pulmonary pain? Is this, uh, you know, gastric, etc. This X-ray also shows on this side uh, uh, lysis of the rib. This is quite obvious, a huge mediastinal tumor. Uh, tumors can also give you severe pain, especially when, when they are spreading into the pleura. You know, Good pleuritic pain. Um, do all the tests and they refer to the oncologist or refer directly to the oncologist when you have something that big. I had a patient uh, uh, of lymphoma who um, who had these huge football-sized uh, uh, secondaries on the lung, and um, and but for her the good thing was she never had any pain at all. And, uh, she, she, despite chemotherapy, she did not survive after two years. So there's a 55-year-old man, normally fit and well, who complains of a mild chest pain after exertion, and um, and uh, his pulse is 67, oxygen levels 99, BP is 100 over 80, and this is his ECG. And the ECG shows sinus rhythm, normal axis, left ventricular hypertrophy with deep T wave inversions. So I would think of a possible, especially after clinical examination, auscultation, looking out for uh, evidence of an aortic stenosis with huge LVH with the systolic overload pattern. Ah, this is an interesting x ray. Uh, so, a 73 year old man, and this is uh, my, my neighbor had a very similar problem. Uh, gives a history of long-standing uh, difficulty in swallowing, chest pain and heartburn, not responding to antacids. He's, he's, he's been visiting a gastroenterologist annually and, and had some procedure done uh, every three years. And his x-ray showed this. So this shows a huge uh, um, uh, medicinal widening because of uh, a mega esophagus, and this is of uh, this is a, an X-ray of someone with achalasia cardia. So, um, and they, typically they don't have the fundal gas is not visible because there's not much that goes past the uh, lower end of the uh, uh, esophagus. So these people have a hugely enlarged tortuous esophagus, which uh, they find they have difficulty in in swallowing. They regurgitate easily. They have severe heartburn, which is quite resistant to. Uh, uh, antacids and PPI therapy, and uh, and quite often, if, if they don't respond to medical treatment, referring them to a, uh, a surgical gastroenterologist um, would be a good idea for surg for uh, cardiomyotomy surgery. Um, the next X-ray is of a 23-year-old man who went uh, drinking with his friends, had a violent uh, had violent vomiting after dinner. And near, nearly immediately developed severe chest pain with sweating. Uh, ECG was normal, and this was his X ray. This X ray shows esophageal rupture with a um, 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 surgical emphysema and a mediastinal emphysema on both sides of the cardiac shadow. You can see uh, air over there. So, um, this quite, quite often responds to conservative treatment. Uh, maybe some oxygen therapy would help and some pain relief and anti-emetics. Uh, the next X-ray of a 70-year-old man who smokes five cigarettes a day has been unwell for, unwell for just a week. 
It's re taken treatment elsewhere but with no improvement. And now he has uh, chest pain, uh, pleuritic type of chest pain with coughing and yellow sputum. And this x-ray shows something like this where you see uh, a, a second shadow behind the cardiac shadow and this is called the sale sign. This is indicative of collapsed consolidation uh, of the left, left lung posterior to the heart. So this is due to a pneumonia quite, and, and uh, antibiotics, mucolytics should help. Um, again, 65 year old smoker with right side chest pain, pain on the shoulder with 5 kilo weight loss. And this x ray shows uh, 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 opacity of the right, uh, right uh, upper lobe, uh, suggestive of a pancreas tumor. In, uh, I think this is the last uh, x ray. This is uh, the x ray of a lady who's, who had an uh, uh, RTA and uh, quite quickly had severe chest pain and breathing trouble. And the x ray shows a pneumonia thorax. With a, um, this requires an ICD placement and, and admission to hospital, drainage, oxygen therapy, pain, pain relief until things get better. So although a lot of these things uh, I don't see in, in, in my outpatients, where I don't see acutely ill patients, uh, we must always be, uh, uh, I think, open-minded to look at uh, uh, rather causes for chest pain rather than just cardiac and uh, acid reflux and musculoskeletal. Thank you. From Marine six, any questions? Last slide, adenoma also rights. What's the cause for that? Trauma, RTM. Secretary, Dr. Sandil, sir, to visit our first speaker. 